Hi, in this video we're going to look at the geometric distribution and a generalization of the geometric distribution is going to be this negative binomial distribution. In a previous video we looked at uh, binomial distributions and then uh, we, we, we kind of tweaked the binomial distribution to get some other distributions, namely the multinomial and hypergeometric. But remember with the binomial distribution we were in the context of having independent trials with each trial ending in either a success or failure. So with the geometric distribution we're going to be in that same situation. Let's say we're given a sequence of of independent trials such that each trial ends in either a, a success or a failure. We're going to count, let's ca let capital M be the, the random variable that represents or counts the number of failures observed before we see the first success. So the notation that we're going to use here is, is cap N and this tilde for uh, it follows, the cap N follows, and then capital G of P, a geometric distribution with parameter P. I'll come back to that parameter in, in just a second. Uh, actually, it's the same parameter that we used before with the, uh, the P is going to be a probability of a success, but we'll, I'll come back to that uh, again in just a second. So what would it be? Let's just kind of uh, kind of develop some intuition about this random variable capital N. What would uh, capital N equals zero mean? Well, it's, capital N is counting the number of failures until we see the first success. So cap N equals zero means there were zero failures before the first success. In other words, the first trial, was end, the first trial ended in a success. Uh, likewise, cap n equal 1. Well, cap n equals 1 means we saw one failure before we saw the first success. And then cap n equals 2 means we saw a failure and then a failure and then a success. Cap n equals 3 means we saw three failures. Or failure, 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 and then success. And so, of course, the support of this random variable, the possible values for cap n, as, I've, as, I've, as we just kind of discussed, would be a, a 0 or 1, 2, 3, and so forth. Now, this is a discrete random variable that support is a discrete set, but this is actually kind of an interesting uh, distribution. This is the first one that we see where there are an infinite number of values in the support. The dis so it's a, discrete, it's a discrete distribution, but there's an infinite number of values uh, in the support. Okay, so let, let me make a little room here and let's, uh, let's talk about calculating some of, these, uh, some of the probabilities in the probability table for this random variable. Uh, as I mentioned before, P, the parameter P is going to be the probability of success, and as before, Q is going to be the probability of failure. In other words, it's, uh, you know, mathematically, it would be 1 minus P. They're complementary events, success and failure. So Q would be equal to a 1 minus P. Uh, as we discussed, when N is, equal, N is equal to 0, what that means is the, there were 0 failures before the first success, so the first trial ended in a success and the probability that you just see a success on that first trial is is p so uh, the p sub zero value would be just p uh, cap n equals one means there was a failure and then a success and the probability of seeing a failure uh, is q the probability of seeing a success is p so the the probability that cap n equals one would be a, a q times p uh, likewise, when cap n is 2, you would see failure with probability q, and then a failure with probability q, and then a success with probability p. So that p sub 2 value would be a q squared times p, and likewise, just extending p sub 3 value, the probability that cap n equals 3 would be q, q cubed times 3, and, and, and so forth. Okay, so uh, let me clean up the slide a little bit, and let's uh, look at... Uh, 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 these probabilities a little bit closer now. Um, so the, notice that the probabilities are actually forming a geometric progression. If you look at the probabilities, starting with it, cap n equals zero and then cap n equals one and so forth, you see a p and then a q times p, a q squared times p, a q cubed times p. That's a geometric progression. You can kind of see where the name, uh, the distribution gets its name from. It's, uh, the probabilities are forming a geometric progression with the common ratio being uh, q, mean q, to go from one, uh, one of these probabilities to, the, to its next neighboring probability, you'd have to multiply by q. Um, so now, what about if I added up all these probabilities? Well, you, you, in order for this to be a probability distribution table or a probability mass table, you, you better have that the sum is equal to a 1. So that's what we're about to, uh, that's going to be the kind of the punchline here. So when we add up all these probabilities, the p sub 0 is p, the p, p sub 1 value is q times p and so forth, and we just get a geometric series then. Uh, we know that a geometric series or, or a geometric series, if you, if you don't have this, uh, you know, uh, in, your, in your memory here, the geometric series always converges to the first term divided by 1 minus the ratio. 
First of all, all of our GMX series are going to converge, and they converge to the first term divided by 1 minus the, the ratio. So the first term in that, in that series is P, uh, so the numerator is P, and then 1 minus uh, Q is, is, is the ratio. But notice that 1 minus Q is equal to P, and so then P divided by P is 1, and, and we get our result that we were expecting, which is that the sum of the probabilities is equal to, is equal to 1. Uh, if we look at a, a certain P sub K value, just a general P sub K value, uh, it generalizes to just a Q to the K power times P. Uh, cap N equals K, again, means we're seeing K failures, uh, and then the last uh, trial ends in a success. So that probability would be a Q to the K times P. And then uh, if we looked at, say, the expected value, let's, let's talk about the expected value of this distribution for a little bit. The expected value is just the sum product. So when I write out the sum product directly, I get this. Notice that on the bottom equation, the, the right-hand side of the expression on the right, the first term is 0 times P, which, of course, is 0. So I can just take that out. Then notice that it it's almost looks like that, that expression on the right-hand side, that bottom, bottom equation, almost looks like a, uh, a, a, it's almost a geometric uh, uh, series, but the, it's got these coefficients 1, 2, and 3, and so forth. So um, it's not quite geometric, uh, but and then notice that the coefficients are arithmetic, uh, you know, 1, 2, 3, they're arithmetic. So I kind of jokingly, half jokingly, refer to this type of expression as a georhythmic series. So it's kind of almost arithmetic, and it's almost, well, the coefficients are arithmetic, but if you ignore the coefficients, you get a geometric series. And so, again, I kind of refer to this jokingly, half-jokingly, as a uh, georhythmic series. And so the question is, well, can we figure out what this series converges to? And the answer is yes. So I'm going to simplify notation a little bit by uh, let's substitute in an S uh, for the sum. Uh, and, and so the S is equal to the expected value of, of cap N. And I'm just going to write S equals this georhythmic geor series. Okay, so the way that you can solve for, uh, you know, the convergence, what this geometric series converges to, I'm going to show you the process right now. So the idea is uh, ignoring the exponents, we said, well, this would have been a, geomet uh, a geometric series with a, a ratio of Q. So let's multiply both sides uh, of, this, of this thing by Q. On the left-hand side, I get a Q times S. And then on the right-hand side, when I multiply times Q, I get a 1 times Q squared times P, and then a 2 times Q cubed times P, and so forth. Now, all I'm going to do now is notice on the, the bottom equation, uh, I'm just going to uh, shift that, that expression on the right hand side over a little bit. So all I've done there is just shift that expression over and I wanted to do that so that I could line up like terms. So now I've got the like terms lined up and I'm gonna, now this is the trick, I'm gonna subtract the second equation from the first equation and uh, when I do that on the left hand side I'm gonna get an S minus a Q times S which I could then factor an S out and that would be S times one minus Q which is S times P. And then on the right-hand side, notice when I, uh, so this is, this is what's valuable about this little process. On the right-hand side, when I sub do the subtraction, uh, I get this expression. Notice all those coefficients on the, or all those numbers, uh, first, first factors of every term are one on the right-hand side, so I can just ignore those. And what I end up with is just a geometric series now. So I, I tweaked the georhythmic series by this process to end up with a geometric series. Uh, this geometric series, again, has common ratio R equal Q. And then I know how to value a geometric series. Uh, I know what it converges to. It's the first term, in this, case, in this case, Q times P, divided by the one minus the ratio, one minus Q. The one minus Q, again, is a P, so then the P's cancel off. And though, now notice then I get that S times P is equal to Q. S is reminding you, S is the expected value of this distribution. And so when I solve for S by dividing uh, by P there, I get uh, that the expected value of, a, uh, of this geometric distribution is a Q divided by P. Uh, the variance, I'm just going to give you the punchline on the variance. The variance of, of this uh, geometric distribution is a Q divided by P squared. So here's a, here's a summary that we have here. I want to mention that if you've seen these geometric series, uh, geometric distributions before, you might have seen, seen them described in a little bit different way. So there, there, there is a common description, and a lot of statisticians use this, this other description of 
uh, of a geometric distribution. And instead of the number of failures before the first success, they'll count the number of trials before the first success. So I'm gonna let n tilde denote that. And if n tilde equals one, it means the first trial. There was one trial before you saw the first success, which means, means that that first trial was a success. Uh, that, of course, would correspond to our cap n being equal to zero. Uh, because there are no failures before seeing that first success. Uh, again, if you look, if you if you're counting, if you're describing cap n tilde, uh, or describing the number of trials until the first success, and that value is two, then it means that the the the, the first success ended on the second trial. That's the same as saying that there was one failure before the first success. So our n value would be one. And likewise, cap n tilde being equal to three would be our cap n equal to, to, to uh, two and, and so forth. So in other words, if you describe, if the, if the random variable was described as the number of trials before the first success, uh, then, then and, and n tilde denotes that random variable, then n tilde would be what we have called n, the number of failures until the first success, plus one. Uh, the support of n tilde uh, here would be one, two, three, four, and so forth. And I've mentioned in a previous video, I don't want my random variables to have, I, I, uh, let me rephrase that. I want my random variables to start off with a value of zero, or, you know, that I could have a starting value of zero, uh, the, the smallest value in the support of the random variable zero. That, that's why I define cap n to be the number of failures before the first success. In our context, with actual context, most often the capped in random, random variable is going to be counting the number of claims during some, you know, some time period or what's called some exposure unit. And when you're counting the number of claims, it's a possibility that you have zero claims. We want zero to be part of that support of the random variable. Um, so that, again, that's why I'm going to use a cap. I'm going to use this cap in definition of geometric distribution, but you might've seen this, this other way that it was described. Now, if it was described as the number of tri trials before the first, six, uh, f first success, uh, and we look, wanted to know what the expected number would be, well, the expected number would be uh, the expected value of what our cap n is plus one, and, and of course, that's just the expected value of cap n plus one. And we know from above what we've just done that the expected value of our geometric distribution as we're gonna define it is a q over p, and when you add one to a q over p, get a common denominator of a p, and then q plus p in, the, in, in that numerator is a one, you end up with just a one over p. And then, um, yeah, so, so the expected value of that random variable is going to be a, a 1 over p. If I wanted the variance uh, of, this, of this cap n tilde random variable, uh, notice it's the variance of what we've already established as our cap n random variable plus 1, but cap n plus 1, the variance of cap n plus 1, plus 1 is not contributing anything to the variance, so that's the same as the variance of cap n, which is the, the q over p squared. So there's, there's the, the rules or the formulas if, if you were defining the random variable be, variable to be the number of trials until the first success, again, I'm not going to do that through the rest of the course. I'm gonna stick with this, this particular uh, case. Okay, so now let's go back to our definition of, uh, or our, our description of the geometric distribution, and I'm gonna tweak it just a little bit. Look at that last line. Instead of the number of failures observed before the first success, uh, is observed. Let's, let's change that and add another parameter. What are the number of failures, not until the first success, but before the rth success? So R, it, R could be, if R is one, then I've got a geometric distribution. And, and this is a generalization of the geometric distribution with a, a new parameter R. So this is called a negative binomial random variable. Uh, I'd, say, I'd say that cap n follows a negative binomial random variable, it has two parameters. We introduce this new parameter R, uh, R and, and, and P. Uh, with respect to calculating probabilities uh, for this random variable, I'm going to come back to that with an example in just a second, but I'm just going to give you the punchline on what the expected value and the variance are for, these, uh, for this negative binomial random variable. So i have introduced this other parameter R, so it, of course the, the expressions are going to depend on R. And as I said a, a second ago, that if you plug in a one for R, you get a geometric distribution. And notice if you plug in a one for R in those, in those formulas for the expected value and the variance right there, you just get the expected value and variance formulas for a, for a geometric distribution, which is what we would expect. Okay, so now let's look at an example to help us kind of uh, illustrate what the probabilities, how to calc calculate probabilities. Let's say I have a fair die that's rolled repeatedly. 
determine the probability that there are three rolls without a six occurring before the second roll of a six. So in our solution, let's define a success to be when a six is rolled, and then cap n would be denoting the random variable uh, representing the number of non-sixes rolled before the second six is rolled. Uh, in that case, then our cap n would be a negative binomial random variable. We're looking at uh, the, you know, the second, when, when does the second success occur? A success being uh, the six being rolled. And with that being our success, the probability of a success is a one, one six. So these are our parameters, r equal two and p equal one six. Now, if we go back to the example, the probability that we seek is that there are three rolls without a six. In other words, three failures uh, before the second success. So we're seeking the value of p sub three. The, the probability that n equals three, that's three failures before the second success. Now since R is two, so we had three failures and then two successes, we had five trials overall. There were five total trials. And in our five trials, the second success occurred on the fifth trial. That would mean in those first four trials, we would have three failures and one success. And so the probability then, every time you see a failure, you have a probability of a Q, and every time you see a success, you have a probability of P. And then we need to count, we've done this several times before, you need to count the number of, of ways of placing three failures in those four trials. And, and so that would be a, a, a four choose three would be the number of ways of, of, of uh, arranging those three failures in those first four trials. Uh, so four choose three times Q cubed times P squared would be our our, our probability for P3. That's going to kind of illustrate how we would calculate then probabilities in general. So if we if we were looking for a P sub K value in general, then what does that mean? That's that uh, the P sub K value is the probability that cap N equals K. That means the Kth success of um, the, the, I'm sorry, the rth success, r is the, the, the parameter, the rth success occurs on, uh, on that, uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm sorry, the, the p sub k, it gets a little tricky, so let's, let's think about it again. The p sub k is probability that cap n equals k. That means that there were k failures before the rth success. So on the last trial, there was a success. That was the rth success. And so on all the trials that came before that, uh, that, that was the, all the trial, that, that would have been the K plus Rth trial because there were K failures and then that Rth success. And so of all the trials that came before that, and there would be K plus R minus one trials that came before that. And in that K plus R minus one trials, there were K failures. And then that would m imply that there were R minus one successes in those in those trials. And so the number of ways to arrange those K failures in those K plus R minus one trials would be K plus R minus one choose K. And then overall there were K failures each showing up with the probability of, of Q and R successes each showing up with the probability of P. So this is our general formula then for a probability that uh, cap N is equal to K. All right, and so uh, let me just kind of clean up the slide and give you the, uh, the, the punchline for the negative binomial uh, information here. So these are the, uh, uh, the, the, this is the probabilities, this is how you calculate probabilities and the expected value and the variance. Uh, you need to commit those, uh, especially the expected value and variance, just commit that to memory. Probabilities, I just think through it. I don't actually, I almost didn't even show you this formula for the probability because it's, it makes it look harder than it really is. I just, again, kind of go through uh, uh, just just kind of go through the, the thought process uh, with each specific question. Okay, so uh, finally the last slide here is just a summary. It's uh, you got the formulas on top for the negative binomial distribution. Uh, the formulas on bottom are the geometric distribution. Uh, geometric distribution is the negative binomial distribution with that R parameter being one. And if you'll just if you'll plug in an R equal one in the, uh, uh, all those formulas in the top half of the slide, then you'll get all the formulas in the bottom half of the slide. Okay, so that does it for the uh, uh, geometric and negative binomial distributions. I'll see you in the next video.